people who live here are proud. They're proud of the building. They're proud of the efforts they see taking place throughout the entire community. What's happened is it's this paradigm shift in thinking. You as a community stakeholder are reaping the benefits of these investments, of this collaboration, of these partnerships that started years ago. It starts with a plan. You, you have to start from the foundation up. Once upon a time, this place employed almost 2,000 people. When I got here in 2006, it employed 840 people. Shortly after I arrived here, I think two, within two months, they announced that it was closing. We lost 840 jobs, a 640,000 square foot building, a 34 acre brownfield site, and this is what we have left. I walked out on the street one day and it, it just looked not so good you know, in our downtown. And it was going downhill really fast. Mm -hmm. So I thought there's no way that I could stay in the downtown unless we got busy and we started doing things mm -hmm. to improve this downtown. So obviously our restroom facilities are in need of minor upgrades and improvements. This space needs total renovation. The building's rock solid, but the rooms cosmetically need to be completely redone. So this is the ballroom. Obviously, seen better days, but you can still see some of the original hand-stenciled artwork on the ceiling, the space where the gas chandelier hung. Imagine this room without these poles. It used to be free span. Imagine this space in the future as a home to wedding receptions. Imagine it as a place where dance recital rehearsals are held and then the main performance is held downstairs on the Eagles Theater stage. It takes well as a Van Landingham, so I shortened it to our van. I think a lot of this goes back when I first got in office. I just felt like that uh, for us to move forward, we need to start doing things together. We sat down, started brainstorming about what we were going to do to redevelop our downtown. Because as we knew, as goes the downtown, so goes your town. Every time we would start moving, wanting something done, we'd kind of little a hitch. And, and I think the hitch was we needed some energy. So we started getting some young professionals involved. And in this community right now, we have a ton of young people and are getting involved. When we invested in a new Welcome Center a year ago, we chose a location that was part of this renaissance period that's taking place here in, in Wabash. We chose a downtown location to uh, grow our resources in the way that we can support our tourists and our residents. So what you see here is a complete transformation of a very blighted building and storefront. In the 1880s, it was used as a livery office and stable house. This side of the building was an actual livery office. So the hardwood floors, the archway, and the brick wall are all original, but everything else is new construction. So when I talk about how exciting it is for the residents to be stakeholders in this community, it's because they are experiencing uh, the benefits of all of this partnership and all of this thinking. The original hooded windows, yeah. we had one that was still there in the center. Now I have the original shape that was in the 1870s is now going across both buildings the way it was back then. Well, my husband and I, um, we wanted to do something for the community. So we were looking for the most distressed building on the street. And these two buildings were the most distressed on Market Street. The more people you have living downtown, Oh my gosh, you're going to have, it's just going to be more vitality and, and energy. People here 24 hours a day. In, in a smaller town like this, you can make such an impact. And you know, a lot of, a lot of people are doing it and we're going to realize, um, you know, just a major impact in the community. So it's, it's, it's awesome. Anyway, come, come and see yeah, the other sure, sure. This house originally was an office space for an eye doctor. Uh, hadn't been used since the mid 80s, early 80s. So it was pretty run down. 
So I had to completely gut the entire structure. All new drywall, all new flooring, all new electrical plumbing, and put together what we see here. Collaboration is the exact word that you're looking for. There isn't anybody in this town that wouldn't work with you or help you to become a better person. Um, and that's, that's why you do things in small towns. You're, you're, not, uh, you're not working in the big city where you don't know anybody. Everybody knows who you are, everybody knows what you're doing, and a lot of people really want to help you to get this stuff done. I can't even describe the spirit of cooperation in this community. I have lived other places, I've worked other places, and, and traveled nationally, but here in Wabash, somebody comes up with an idea, you, f you start talking about it, then you go to the next meeting and 20 more people are talking about it, and then pretty soon you have 100 people talking about it, and it's, how can we be a part? In Wabash, as in many small towns in Indiana, there's scarcity of resources, uh, brain drain, uh, all, we face all the same problems every small town in the Midwest faces. I think one of the things that's unique about Wabash is everybody's pulled together as a community to try and move us forward. And you see the results throughout town, well beyond just things that the Honeywell Foundation's been able to do. Um, the Charlie Creek Foundation and Richard Ford and the development of the Charlie Creek Inn really was, a, I think, the turning point in downtown. And now as you uh, look through our main downtown corridor, uh, there are numerous other people making private investments in our community. This uh, facility we're in right now was originally the Hotel Indiana in 1920. And so over the years it had been a multitude of things, but at the time it was called Red Apple Inn. Well the owner had become very ill and so it kind of fell into quite a bit of disrepair. We had this vision for a really nice recreated hotel, this 1920s vision and we went after it. Lois, I was wanting to know if we could bring back the wink and the gun. We're good at that, aren't we? Yeah. The collaboration that uh, Wellbrook of Wabash has already established with the Wabash uh, community has really been unbelievable. Uh, we do different sponsorships. We have a sponsorship with the Historical Museum who does a posting uh, of a display case once every 30 days and so it's a great conversation piece for our residents but also we do additional out outside of the Wellbrook Center. Uh, we focus on the Honeywell Center downtown. They do different expos in the evenings. We also are a large sponsor for the BMA, which is a local play series that's done at the Honeywell Center. Um, they brought plays in such as Mamma Mia, such as uh, Memphis, uh, a couple other ones, West Side Story, and the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. Uh, those were all sponsored by the Wellbrook of Wabash. And one thing we loved about having that sponsorship was it gave our residents the opportunity to go and so we could transport them down there, and they really loved that. A lot of our residents have been lifelong Wabash residents, so that's always been something they've done. This was known as the Mark Hahn Building, for, as short for Mark Honeywell. And it had been home for lots of employees and lots of investment for a long time, but eventually it was closed. And when I got here, it had been boarded and vacant and begun falling into a state of disrepair. The company that we helped move in here, we agreed we would invest about $100,000 with them that we would help them with some tax abatement and some machinery and equipment. And that company is Five Hour Energy. This was their first facility. Today, this facility is their national distribution center. Wabash Marketplace is a Main Street organization. Our mission statement includes fostering community and promoting economic development downtown. The, the fostering community side, um, those projects include everything from the farmer's market and, and First Friday events and any other promoting downtown events. On the economic development side, we do everything from facade grants to merchant roundtables, just other ways to, to find a, a good way to drive business and, and especially small business in downtown Wabash. There's nothing to prevent you from doing anything in the world from Wabash. I mean, uh, with the fiber optic network, run everywhere, you know, the world's at your front step. And, you know, I think that anything is possible uh, with the infrastructure that exists. Less than 18% of the communities in the United States have a fiber to the premise, or basically what we would call 
gigabyte to the home. So you've got gigabyte to the home. It's, it's a Google Fiber type of system. So you've taken Google that's going after, as you know, the larger communities, which is the majority of people that have fiber to the premise, um, to Kansas City, they're, they've, they're building in Austin, Texas, Provo, they've announced 24 other communities, and they're all sizable, they're NFL communities. So what you've done is take NFL Fiber, Google Fiber, to the rural communities. Well, I think that's really visionary. When Wabash came into Northeast Indiana, I was a little bit skeptical about whether we'd be able to serve their needs. And it, it hasn't been about serving their needs, it's been following their lead. It's all about being able to compete in the global marketplace. And Wabash now is leading the pack in terms of establishing Northeast Indiana as a place where people want to live, work, and raise a family. We couldn't do it were it not for the leadership of communities like Wabash. Wabash has an enviable track record, I think, of uh, reinvesting in itself and making good use of that investment. Um, I don't know that it's investment for investment's sake or raising the bar for the sake of raising the bar. From an industry point of view, it, it helps us attract professionals to rural Indiana. These could be employees uh, with spouses, with trailing employment needs, with outside interests. Ultimately, it's about helping families, enabling local families who might otherwise be tempted or forced to relocate elsewhere. I, in my former days, I was, a, I was an elementary school principal and teacher for 31 years, and I thoroughly, I've been blessed, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed doing that because I always enjoyed working with kids. And uh, I think that job is a perfect background for being mayor. And I think the thing that I enjoy most is, and this may sound corny, but it is to help people solve problems and to move forward. We all know what a promise is, right? This is called the Wabash County Promise because we want to make a promise to you that if you work hard, then we are going to work hard to help you be successful. The Wabash Promise was born out of a desire to help kids establish a college savings account. Children with college savings accounts are seven times more likely to attend college and four and a half times more likely to graduate from college. When we learned about that research, we really started chewing around this idea, and we said, what other elements does do research indicate? What other asset elements help a child develop a college and career identity? And so we looked for a model that was in existence, and we couldn't find one. And so the leaders in Wabash County built one. Instead of just saying, hey, if you'd like to go to college, then, then we're going to give you the opportunity to apply. We're saying, hey, every senior is going to apply to college. Schools sometimes are in that budget crunch, and so we're trying to figure out how can we do more with less. And one of the ways we figured that out was through our relationship with the YMCA. YMCA a couple years ago wrote a grant for summer learning loss and uh, they competed with cities like Milwaukee, Tampa Bay, Silicon Valley, and we were one of the recipients and uh, really speaks to the innovation of, of our local YMCA and it speaks to the partnership because through that uh, summer learning program, um, kids in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade are able to continue on um, and, and not fall behind and uh, hopefully we're eliminating the achievement gap early on. Hope is a better predictor of success than test scores or attendance. And the moment a child loses hope for their future, they not only check out of school, but they check out of life. And so hope is not easy to be built, but it can be done, but it's only done on a local level. And our community is really wrapped around that concept of every child matters and we want to make sure that we're connecting kids with the resources, the people in their lives, and the support mechanisms to help them not only dream about their future, but also have the resources to pursue their dreams. 
through our schools, through our institutions, through our government. We've really worked hard for eight years here to preach the gospel of tear down silos and let's build a sandbox that we can all work in. Wabash has a tremendous energy about it right now. It's got some mojo, but uh, you know, I think that we, we've got to capitalize on all the people making these investments to keep it going. There's really just a lot of little things that make a difference in your life. I was um, visiting with my sister um, this last weekend, and she said, you know, Wabash really has it put, you know, they have it down. She says, we really need to do this in our community. We were actually at the drive-in theater with all of our kids. All of our kids got in free because they were under 12. That was sponsored by InGuard. We were able to have a night at the drive-in with my sister and her family and our family, and it was just fun. Um, there's a lot of times like that where we can just take advantage of the things around here. We really don't have to go out of town a lot because there's just a lot of fun things to do here. Wabash is one of the best little cities to have a business in. Your local people support you. Other towns, they come and they as well support you. So it's been very good, very good to us. Truly, it's a, I think it's a wonderful town, you know, to be in. And we have mm -hmm. so many people come in here mm -hmm. and they absolutely love Wabash. They love it. And all the surrounding areas, they come over and they support the restaurants. They support the shop. And, you know, it's just a good place to be, huh? Mm -hmm. It really is a good place to be. And we have a lot of things we want to get done yet. As a kid, you, you always think there's bigger and better things out there. You want to do things more than what your parents did. You want to have the better life. And the better life was always the big city. Uh, that's not the case anymore. Uh, the better life is the small town. The small town is, is for a lot of people. And there's a lot of people that stay in the small town and they believe in the small town. And there's people like myself that have to move away to see how important the small town really is.